Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today I've got a, I'm going to kind of get on a project that I don't know whether this is going to work or not. I've seen another gentleman do something similar on YouTube. Uh, I think his name is, he goes by Paul X. Uh, his don't have a lot of explanation to them, but it's very well done video and uh, it just, uh, really shows a lot of uh, of how he does something but I I don't think he ever talks in it or anything so anyhow uh, I'm gonna attempt to do something like he did uh, primarily because this uh, crankshaft that I had for the 125 RM uh, probably a month or so back uh, they're friends of mine and uh, you know, friends that I grew up with and rode bikes with back in the day. And it seems that this crankshaft is a two-year only uh, item for Suzuki. And it, this thing, you know, they didn't abuse this thing. It was already abused when, when they got it. Uh, they had, they had bought the bike and it was just, uh, it was in bad shape. So I'm gonna attempt to fix the crankshaft on this. Don't know if I can get it done, but I'm gonna give it the good old college try. So let me get you overhead here and we'll take a look at this thing and then we'll delve into it and see what we, what we think we can do. Okay, let's kind of revisit where we were at here. Uh, this one, if you remember right, the uh, uh, the gear on the clutch side had been welded on, and I I cut that off and have got it removed, and still got to remove a little bit of uh, welding slag here. Now the splines, I believe, look okay. And all the bearing and seal surfaces look okay. Uh, this is uh, then the uh, mag side. It was just kind of beat on here. So we, we're basically dealing with thread repair on both sides here. And it's, it's more than just repair. It's, we're going to have to sever these and drill them and uh, press in a new piece and pin them and they will probably also be pressed in with uh, a Loctite product but you know there's nothing wrong with all this except the threaded portion and that's where we're running into uh, the problem is they they increased the stroke the the following years, I think. So I think, if I remember right from what I, little bit I've looked, a 76 was, I think that was kind of the first year of the RM. I'm not real sure, maybe it was 75. But anyhow, they, uh, uh, they basically used the TM125 stroke. And then in 77 and 78, they, made it a longer rod, I believe, uh, or maybe, I, I really can't remember all the particulars on it, but, you know, the bottom line is it's hard to find. You can find them, uh, the offset for the pin is what is different from any of the rest of them. So it's got to be 77 or 78, and it can be uh, RM100 also. They use the same one. And actually, these rods, uh, there may be something a little bit different with it, but I have, I think I compared this once before. This is a TSTC rod. And to me, they look the same. Now, they may be different structurally. The numbers on them are a little bit different. But, let's see, this, no, that's the same width and everything. 
So I, I think that they're basically the same, but there's nothing wrong with this rod. Uh, a new bearing on each end and set this thing back up, I think it'd be just fine. You know, a new one would be great if you had it. And I was able to find a new, not a new, but a used gear. So I've got that so we don't have to try to clean this thing up and reuse it. And while I was ordering some other parts one day, I just went ahead and got a new nut for both sides. So really that's all I'm out at this point is a couple of nuts and uh, a used gear. So we'll see if we can get this to work. I, I re I'm just not sure whether I can pull this off or not. It's got to be pretty precise because we don't want to uh, uh, introduce any vibration. Uh, these are pretty high revving engines, so uh, just a little bit of, of uh, offset or something can make a big difference. But in the end of the day, the only thing this is, this is doing is holding the rotor on. And on, at the end of the day on this side, the only thing this is doing is holding the gear on. So it's not that precise, I don't think, but we want it to be as centered as we can. So I think the first thing I want to do before I do anything else is set this up, try to get it set up in the lathe and make sure that this portion, none of this stub is bent other than this, this stratted area. And I, I don't think we're going to have an issue on this side, but we've got to, there again, we've got to remove this. Uh, you, a fellow might be able to weld these up, but I just, I'm afraid of the heat and then trying to rethread something. So I think what I'm going to attempt to do on both sides is to just sever the ends, drill them, and then this side here will go into about in here somewhere and we will pin that and of course we'll thread it and everything before we put it in there and we'll go ahead and drill the hole and then we'll make the stub that slides into there, uh, well it'll be pressed into there, uh, we'll make it our interference fit so we can, uh, when it's all said and done, drill through this and uh, pin that and then come back and trim that pin down. Uh, and basically the same thing here, except that this will interfere with the keyhole a little bit, so we'll have to go back in and recut the keyhole a little afterwards, just pretty much the bottom of it. So when we, when we drill this out, uh, you'll see that we'll open the hole up here in the bottom of this. But that's the first thing we need to do, and you know, I don't know what the problem was here, whether the uh, it was left loose or whatnot, but for some reason, I think the nut kept coming off, and that's why they went ahead and put the uh, and welded it on. And this side, I'm not sure what happened here either, uh, but I can guarantee you if you used one of these you wouldn't have this problem. This is what causes this issue. So if you're if you ever have to and you know I do it. I, I'll take and tap the final part of uh, the crankshaft in or out a little bit sometimes usually not in but most of the time you'll have to you know, tap it a little bit to get it out. Uh, I use pullers where I can, but at the end of the day, you know, you end up tapping them a little. But you use one of these, and that way you're not going to do this. So, you know, I, I, I just know this piece is is really bent. You could, if it wasn't bent, I think you'd come in here and and re-thread this with a die and it would probably be okay. But anyhow, let's get it over in the lathe and we'll check this side first and see what the run out is. 
Okay, the first thing I'm going to do here is I've got some, you can probably see them here, looks like little rust pits along this portion. That's where I'm going to be chucking this up. Uh, there's not too many, but there's kind of a rough patch right there, here, over to about there. So I'm just going to chuck this up in a, uh, uh, a collet, and I'm just going to try some 400 grit sandpaper and see if I can get this uh, smoothed up, because that's, that's where we're basing everything off of when we chuck it up in the four jaw truck, or four jaw uh, chuck. And we've got a kind of an area there that's been hammered on a little bit, so we'll have to watch that we don't uh, put it in there. But anyhow, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do it this side and the other, and uh, then we'll go ahead and start looking for a run out on the other end. I'm not sure whether 400 will be aggressive enough to get rid of it or not, but we'll see. See how we're doing here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get a little something a little more aggressive to start. Let me see if I can find some 220. Well, I don't know. I I think I'm seeing some runouts just this way right here. So. May be disappointed. <sighs> yeah, you can still see the pitting, but at least the the roughness is down. Let me just hit it real quick with some four hundred. Kind of smooth it up. See that way it holds it pretty good and it doesn't damage the the area here with the collet. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Let me get the other side taken care of. Okay, we've got a little different size on the other side. You just get a, you get grip all the way around, so you're not putting strain in one certain area with those. So it's a, a better deal. And we got a little bit more of it on this one actually. It was probably down at the bottom, and there was some condensation in there. Would be my guess. Probably not condensation. Probably water. That so happens with so many of these. You know, they set someplace, usually outside, and they just succumb to the, to the elements, basically. It's much better. Just hit it 400 a little bit. Okay, I've got this set up in the... Oh boy, I don't know. I'm almost thinking this is looking pretty sad down here, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll get it straightened up best we can here at the bearing surface. And we'll see. I know this is messed up. So, okay, there's our high. So we'll loosen the low. 
tighten the high. And same thing here. Much better. Okay, I've got a feeling we're going to need to do some tapping. Let me uh, work on this a little bit. Okay. Doing pretty good there now. I just had to tap this in just a little bit, a couple spots, and then come back to my uh, four jaw and finish it up. I think it's about as good as it gets. So let's get it out here. This is what I'm worried about. Oh boy. So I've got ten thousandths there. Let me see if I can, if if it's anything I can adjust. It's going to be this. Well, that may be the deal because we're certainly made some headways there. Okay, we've got a little bit more there. Let's see if we can get it. I think we went the other way. That's within a, about a thou and a half. Let's see if we can do it any good here in the uh, back at the four jaw. It may just be some roughness on the end there, but let me see. Okay, we're that's our high spot. Certainly better than it was. I think I think we can probably live with that. As far as the repair goes. Let me fiddle with it. Okay, I think we're where we can deal with that. It's less than a half thou. It acts like it's a rough area here on the... Yeah, you can kind of see where... Yeah. I think somebody took a file to it right there a little bit. So I think that's okay, but I just want you to look at the the end here. This is what we've got to repair. Those hammers just do a heck of a job on things. 
All right, let's do some measuring and get a game plan. I think we can probably do it if I'm capable of uh, doing an accurate enough job. Okay, I've just gone through and uh, I've got the diameter of the stud and the amount of stick out that's the uh, total stick out here. And actually, I went over and looked at the other crankshaft that they sent me that has a different stroke on it. That's why we can't use it. And measured it. Other than that, everything else looked the same on it. So I've got that jotted down and the length of the threads here. I believe that's about all I need. So our next, uh, the next step is going to be to cut this off right here at the, at the taper, at the start of the taper. Okay, set up here. Uh, there's a little bit of a radius up here. I'll cut that out with, uh, I'll face that off when I'm done. Uh, I'm trying to stay out of the radius right now so I can get a straight cut. So let's see what we can do. Boy, look how bent that is. I think the taper and everything's okay. Dial indicator sure uh, proves it out. Let me find some cutting oil. very malleable. That's why it bends so easy when you hit it with a hammer. This doesn't seem like the right thing to be doing to a crankshaft, but you know when you get situations like this you you be, you gotta give it a try. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's a boat anchor and not a very good one at that. Really is cutting it very nice. Okay, you can see a little bit, that's the radius that's sticking out there still. Kind of beyond the taper. I don't know, maybe uh, uh, 30 thousandths or something. So we'll, we'll just take and face that off. I had to adjust my tool bit, I was a little bit high.
Okay, you can see there now kind of where we're at. So, yeah, the, the little lumpy that I was getting was somebody had taken a file to it right there, just on this one spot next to the keyway. But it's not enough to bother anything. I think everything's okay there. So, next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and try to get a, a, a dimple started into the uh, snout there and then we'll try to figure out what size we need to have. We'll just start with a very small one, just something to get us started. We'll start very slowly here so we didn't, we don't get uh, shoved off one side or the other. We want to try to stay right in the middle. Kind of get a dimple started. Okay, get the start of it there. Now we need to figure out how uh, how deep and how uh, how big, and then we'll accommodate that. We'll we'll make the uh, the the new piece be the you know whatever the drill size is going to be. Then we'll make it. 2,000 smaller or, what, or larger to accommodate uh, our press fit here. Okay, our thread here is supposed to be a 10 millimeter uh, 125 pitch. So I'm going to step up my drill sizes here just uh, incrementally up to, uh, let's see, 2360 force. Uh, that should put me about four thousandths under the stud size that's going to go in there. Uh, we'll actually probably trim that down a little bit uh, so we've got about a two to two and a half thousandths interference fit. But the, uh, the thing is, is it's going to be smaller, the hole's going to be smaller than the uh, stud that replaces that goes in there and we'll have to recut this because as we drill we're going to uh, open up the bottom of the keyhole the key slot and then when we press the new piece in it's uh, it's going to kind of start filling it back up again so we'll have to take a, uh, a woodruff key cutter and go back in and cut that out uh, I'm going to go to about uh, an inch and a half in here so it'll put me into right about in here and what I'm going to try to do is pin it right here so I just want to make sure that I've got enough down inside there that I can I can uh, center that up and get a, a pin through it and we'll Loctite it also but the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start my drilling and I'm just going to step it up a little bit at a time so that I can stay as straight as possible. So I guess let's see what we can do here.
try to eliminate as much wobble of the drill going in as possible. It's touching now. Just let it start very slowly so we can stay as straight and in line as possible. Okay, looks like we're good. Say I'm going to go in at uh, 1.475 is the depth that I'm looking at. I've got a piece of tape on my drill bit there, but uh, I can also watch my uh, tailstock and get her pretty close there too. Okay, on, I just went through on this uh, last pass. You can see here where I've, there's a hole on the bottom of the keyway now. So that's going to get bigger as, uh, as I step up. So I'm just getting ready to start my next step. Slow as it goes. Try to keep it straight. You can see the drill bit in the hole now, or I can anyway. really drills pretty nice. Some pretty soft material. I noticed that when I was uh, severing the, the bolt off of it. Cut really nice. Okay, it's in all the way there. All right, we got one step up after this one. I'm actually putting a little oil down into that hole. I like how it's staying straight, as far as I can tell. You gotta kinda go slow through that keyway. Tends to wanna grab a little bit. You can see it, some of the shavings are coming out the keyway now. We want to get everything done to this piece 
before we pull it out of there because we've got to take it out to make the new stub. We don't want to have to put this one back in again. Okay. And this will be our last last size through. This is uh, 0.357. I believe our stud size is 0.363, if I remember right. So that'll give us a press fit. And then we'll pin it. And we'll also put the Loctite in it. It should be okay. The pin is what will hold it because uh, we're we're pulling. We're going to be pulling on that as we tighten the nut, so that will uh, that's the force that we're trying to overcome. Shouldn't be any problem. Okay. See, we just about took out the bottom of the of the keyway there. I think you can see that. Okay, so that was our final drill. And this is, of course, the stob that we cut off. And we're going back in with just about the same size diameter there, and that won't go in there. So that's going to be our press fit. We'll, uh, on the new one, we'll chamfer that and set it over in the press and press that thing right in there. And uh, let me show you again. The, uh, the hole there, I think, probably too far. So you can see in up in there now, we've cut just about all the bottom of it out. So we'll have to recut that keyway. Okay, we'll just go back in here and chamfer that a little bit. Be good. Okay, so we just chamfered the inside a little bit, and uh, I actually was rethinking this a little, which is sometimes a bad thing. And I, I thought actually maybe what I should do is come back and pin it here. But if I did, that would be in the seal area. I would have to come all the way back to the bearing <clears throat> in order to uh, do that. So I, I think I'll just go ahead and pin it here. This is my original thought. I'll do it uh, 90 degrees from the keyway and just go through with uh, probably a 3 16 pin, maybe an eighth, I, I don't know, we'll see. And, uh, you know, because that's kind of a flat spot there uh, on the other side, I'm going to go on into here, but it, it won't be in the seal area. So I'll show you what I'm going to try to do on that side. But for this right now, uh, we're done with this part until we make the piece, the, the new stub that goes in. So I'll be able to go ahead and take this out, then we'll start working on the stub. Okay guys, here's, uh, here's what we did today. Um, see if I can get you a shot up into the hole there. I think you can probably see the bottom. So we're up in there. It's almost an inch and a half. It's 
uh, 1.475. So about there. So it actually goes up into here, but I just wanted far enough in there where I could pin through here. Actually, it'll be 90 degrees to that. But right in there is where I want to pin. Uh, it's kind of flat there. I think I can get in there. I, I really would like to get up into here further, but I would have to go all the way into the, to the bearing surface, and, uh, which would be okay. But just, uh, just really, you know, if that's a long way to go. And in here, you'd mess up your seal, your sealing surface right here, kind of between those two lines. So that's, I think, the best alternative is to do what we do. Otherwise, we'd have to go all the way up. And I'm going to have to do that on the other side, but it's uh, only into the bearing surface. And I'll show you on that one. But the next, with the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll try to finish up the stub and get it pressed in and hopefully get this piece complete. Uh, on the next one, uh, this one here, this is actually the bearing surface here. And see, there's no place to pin through here unless you get into the splines. So I'm going to have to get up into here, but it's no problem because the seal runs up here. And these are slip fit bearings, so the bearing will fit there. And I believe it's the, the shim and then a spacer and then the gear. I believe that's, yeah, well, it's right here. <clears throat> I ran a picture of it off. So we've got the, the seal, the bearing, the shim, the spacer, the gear, uh, the Belleville washer, and the nut. So that's correct how it'll go on. So when we uh, go in and pin this one, it'll be pinned actually underneath the, the bearing or the shim, or the spacer rather. So probably right, kind of right about in here. So we'll be going in pretty close to the same probably. Yeah, pretty close. And uh, we'll probably need to go just a little further. Well, actually it'll be to here. No, it won't be as far. But we just want to be into here and have a, a good area to get that pin in. But I'm pretty happy with this. Everything stayed pretty true uh, as far as I could tell anyhow. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding when we uh, press in the new stub. But for right now, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, that's, I'm happy with this. So I think uh, the next video, I'm not sure when, when I'll get to that, but we'll start on the stub. We'll try to finish up each one of these first. Okay, guys, there you have it. Uh, we're... We're about a fourth of the way through. So it takes quite a, quite a bit of time to do this. And I just, I want to show you as much as I can and explain it along the way. Uh, this is not something that you do a lot of, or I've never done it. And I've done quite a few builds, but things like that are coming. The time will come that you can't get replacement parts and you're going to have to, you're going to be stuck with beat up parts that you're going to have to fix. And at that point, this is the kind of thing you're probably going to do almost on a, uh, you know, monthly basis or something if you're doing it. Uh, or somebody's going to. Because when I, when I go to look for crankshafts, and I've, I've harped on this before, but if, uh, when you look for crankshafts, always look for, the threaded portion because nine times out of ten somebody's beat on that thing with a hammer and it's it ruins it it just ruins it you can you can no longer set it up between centers on the lathe to adjust your your uh, run out and it's you know so many of them 
are damaged anyway from water for the for the uh, ceiling area and the bearing surface so you're going to have to do that too and I've done a couple of those uh, I think Suzuki 125 and I did what did it on a on the uh, uh, Yamaha 250 MX so you know there's just a lot of stuff like that that's coming uh, it's it's already here in some instances where you've got a two-year only or a one-year only crankshaft and it's all uh, beat up uh, you just have to do what you what you can do to to get them running to get them running again. So, uh, you know, we're heading that direction. So anyhow, thanks for joining me in the shop today, and we'll see you on the next video.